So in this video, we're going to go through what one could call a data cleaning and data wrangling exercise. So here's a glimpse of what we want to end up with. A nice sort of uh, data file, okay? A spreadsheet where we have variables here. We have country name. Then actually we have abbreviations for these countries, either with two letters or with three letters. Okay, so San Marino is either SM or SMR. Then for each of these countries, we have the land area. How big is that country? We have the health expenditure expressed in percentage terms of GDP. So uh, uh, for instance, in the Maldives, there's about nine and a half percent. The health expenditure amounts to around nine and a half percent of GDP. And we have GDP per capita expressed in dollars. OK, so this is what we want to end up with nicely variables in columns, observations, which in our case are countries in rows. Now, that's the final result and we'll actually extend it a little bit uh, then as well. But this is not usually how you start out. OK, so let's um, close that. So. <clears throat> Here's how we start out for this example. We're having three data files, one for each of the three variables, the GDP per capita, the uh, um, health expenditure, and the uh, land area. So what we need to do is we need to bring these data together in one, in one sheet. So that's the task. To get there, you really need to know your way around Excel. There is no way around it. And this is a sort of task um, any graduate may be easily asked to do in any sort of environment and any sort of company in whatever industry. OK, so the, the skills you're going to practice here going to help you a lot during your degree, but even more so afterwards in your job. OK, Excel skills are absolutely crucial. So <clears throat> there's a number of things beyond just merging the data set. When you look at data, there are just some things which can go wrong sometimes. So let's see what we can figure out what uh, whether something's gone wrong. I'll uh, build in a few little problems into this data set. So first we may want to, to see whether the um, the data here are sensible. OK, so it says here land area measured in square kilometers. So for instance, Austria, 82 and a half thousand square kilometers. Now, let's open a browser because we will need to use the uh, the Internet for a number of for a number of things. So actually, so here, here, we, here we have what we want. So here's our data set. And you can perhaps see Austria, where is that in row 11, has a land area of 82,500. So firstly, you want to be convinced that if you're using these data, that these data are right, that they're, that they're good. Now, it turns out these all come from uh, the excellent gapminder.org website. We'll see that later in a moment. But for instance, you could ask the question, uh, how, you know, how large is Austria? OK, and what you see here is you get some information and it says 83, almost 84,000 square kilometers. So what do we have here? 82 and a half. So this is certainly the right order of magnitude. There may be different ways. How do you calculate the land area? And I'm not here interested in chasing down the difference between 82 and a half and 83.8 thousand kilometers. To me, that's that's fine. OK. And of course, for instance, you see Australia is very large. So let's actually see that all of these data are sensible. Now, here's the first Excel skill. Sorting data is very important. So highlight your variables. All of the variables of your spreadsheet go to data, sort, and uh, let's sort by land area. OK, so here we go. So San Marino is the um, 
the smallest uh, land area. That's very sensible. But San Marino is a very small uh, place. Let's go to the largest countries. Uh, Russia is, of course, very, uh, uh, very large here. We know that. Okay. Uh, so we see this all looks very sad. So there are no countries here which we wouldn't expect to be amongst the largest country. Russia, China, United States, Canada, Brazil, Australia. This looks all eminently sensible. So also note that in this, let's go to the top again. Uh, we have, we seem to have observations for the land area for all of these, uh, for all of these countries, right? Uh, yes, okay, so that's good. <coughs> now, note that we have basically the same information, i.e. which country we are dealing with in three different variables. The country name, that two-digit identifier and the three-digit identifier. So that will become important. Uh, if we want to merge the data from different spreadsheets. So let's look into the next one, let's say the health expenditure file. So here health expenditure, we're actually only having the country information, not the identifier. So perhaps these data come from different sources and then that's the sort of thing that can happen. So let's see, there are some missing information. So for Brunei, for instance, we don't have any information and a stands for not available that's totally common you have not all countries for libya we don't have information so let's see again if we sort that okay sort by health expenditure so monaco has the smallest health expenditure just very healthy people living there presumably um lots of uh some african countries papua new guinea bosnia herzegovina now there may be different ways of how this is measured is that in all countries perhaps private and public health expenditure um there may be inconsistencies okay but so some countries with very small health expenditure let's go to the top bit so you can see below 10 percent seems to be the norm there's some much higher than 10 percent marshall islands and united states and sierra leone are very very high now we know it's a well-known fact that in united states there's a huge amount of gdp spent on health lots through private health insurances uh, in germany for instance also very high mainly through public health services um, let's see where's United Kingdom is bang on 10%. These data are from 2019. Okay, so nothing that looks super suspicious here. So let's go to the third file here. Um, the uh, GDP per capita measured in US dollars. Uh, here we have the country name and the GOID the two-digit identifier. Let's again sort this to see whether there's any suspicious information. So we have very poor countries, Burundi, Malawi, Niger, Madagascar, Central Africa. So mostly African countries. This is all as we unfortunately expect. Let's go to the very top here. Okay, very rich countries, Iceland, Ireland. So for instance, Ireland, here GDP per capita is around $80,000. Norway, $82,000. Switzerland, Luxembourg, Monaco, United States of America. So, well, it's perhaps not a surprise that the United States is very rich, but this seems to suggest that GDP per capita is more than $6 million. This would make us suspicious. You see Monaco, 185,000, and then the United States, more than 6 million. So something perhaps is not quite right. Sometimes when you're dealing with data, you're just having typos, okay? Or something has been forgotten, or a decimal point has been moved, or a number swapped around when data are being entered. Sometimes mistakes happen. So this is something where we need to, uh, we need to chase that. 
So we could go, uh, for instance, we could ask again what what was GDP per capita in the USA in 2019. Okay, and you can see here that's to the order of 65,000. Okay, what we have here is 6.3 million. So the right order of magnitude would be if the comma, the decimal point would move two, two spaces to the left. Now, as I know, I told you, we know where these data are from. They're from the fantastic Gapminder uh, website. Um, we'll go to resources. There should be a data link somewhere here. Data, and you can get a spreadsheet. So here, let's look for uh, GDP uh, per capita. Let's see where we find that GDP per capita. Now, there's actually a number of uh, of different measures, I didn't give you details. In fact, I absolutely don't even know exactly which version I have given you. So let's try and find the United States. Uh, United States, here we go. And so we want to find uh, where's the United States here, 2019, 2019, 65.3. Okay, so let's go back here. So what has happened here, um, th these data aren't exactly from here. So you could try and correct that I, exactly and uh, you'd have to look where the data exactly come from. I haven't given you this information. But what has happened here is that this decimal point has moved two places to the wrong side. Okay, so we have to put that here and then we are uh, in the right order of magnitude that's all that's important for here so we can uh, sort the data again okay go to the highest country so now you see united states of america is indeed very rich but it's not the richest country okay so let's have that so let's also see actually how many observations we have so in GDP per capita, we're having a hundred and uh, bum, 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 181 rows. That means we have 180 observations because the first row has the title. Then in health expenditure, we're having 181 countries, 181 countries. And in land area, we are having 182 countries. So these data files contain uh, different amounts of countries. So if you now want to merge, <clears throat> possibly the best thing to do is to just start with a new data set. Okay, I will save it somewhere. Um, okay, and I'll call it temp. And the first thing you may want to do is you want to make sure that we have all the countries. Actually, before we do that, let's look at a little table. Partly I've prepared that already, but there's some extra information I want to uh, I want to put in here. The number of observations. So let's extend that table so yeah GDP per capita we had 180 uh, health expenditure we had 181 and here we had 182 so there's different numbers so when you merge data sets you have to decide Excel will do the hard work okay so we'll don't have to do that by hand but we have to find common information in different data files so we need land expenditure and health to have a common piece of information which we can use to merge and indeed it has both of them have the country name that's brilliant right then we also need 
land area and GDP per capita to have a common set of information. And they do, they have this and this, but also this and this. This is great. Okay, so it seems to be we could use country name to merge everything. However, there's a problem with country names. The same like with company names or, um, or, or city names, because sometimes do all it could be that countries are spelled differently. Okay, are they all spelled correctly? Are they, or perhaps they are spelled correctly? Are they all spelled consistently? That's really all we need, because we will need that for Excel to do the hard work of matching the data. The functional use for that we'll see in a moment. Okay. This is why usually we love using these identifiers, the two or three uh, letter identifiers, because you can't really spell them. They're sort of normed. Okay, so we're having a little bit of a problem with that health expenditure file, because that only has the country names and none of these identifiers. We'll have to see. We'll perhaps have to do a little bit of manual work. And that's what all of this exercise is about. And there's this mystery of uh, an equal number of countries. So what we're going to do is first we're going to create our new file where we have country information. Now the file which, which seems to be really useful here is um, the land, well, and see that here, the land area file because it has all these country identifiers. So let's use that as our starting point. That is here. I'm going to leave, I'm gonna, just going to copy that country information into my new file. Okay, if you're wondering how did he uh, how did he do that, I didn't see what he clicked. You can highlight this and then you can go to, uh, sorry, not to file, to home, copy, or you can highlight all the area you want to copy and press Control C on a Windows machine or Command C on an Apple machine. And that copies things. And then you go to where you want to paste it. Uh, go to the top left. And I pressed Control V or Command V in an Apple. Or you can go to Home and Paste. And then it will paste what you have copied in there. I use Control C and Control V. Start using keyboard shortcuts. Makes things much easier. So. But now we need to see, now let's go to the GDP file. Now what we have here is, okay, uh, is I'm not going to copy the heading, just the countries, control C, control D. I'm going to paste that down here. Okay, so there are now different ways how you can how you can find the basically I want to find all the unique countries. So that was GDP and now I'm looking at health here. I only have the names. Sorry, so all of these. Control C and temp and I'll copy them. I'll copy them down here. Okay. So So here is a very useful function now in Excel. So we have in column A, we have all these names. Uh, we have uh, more than uh, 500 rows here, 544. But we know that many names will appear three times. We want to know what are the unique names. And there's a function called unique equals, so you go to any free field, Free column, you type equals unique, open parenthesis. Now we highlight that entire column, close parenthesis, and enter. And what we now have here is a list of all the unique names. So you can see we have 188 unique names. So that's great. Okay, so does that mean we have 100, sorry, 187? So let me. Copy the uh, the heading over here. Let's make that bold. Okay. So let's actually sort this. Data sort. 
Okay, I can't turn the part of my sorry. So data sort my data has headers. Okay. Now sometimes there are things that don't work and I don't know why, to be honest. So the reason may be, I'm pretty sure, is because this is like an array. Yeah, that's an array, it's sort of a formula. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the formula away. I just want the names. And that's a very useful function in Excel. And so we highlight this entire thing and you press Control C to copy or do it here. Here you can copy. And we just stay here. And now we go to paste. We go to paste values and you go to this little symbol, paste values. Okay. So you now see, now we have the text. There are no formula here anymore. Okay, so now let's see whether we can sort. We highlight column E, data, sort. Okay, now we could sort. Brilliant. Okay, let's just quickly scan through this list. Can we see something fishy? And indeed, look at this. There's actually, remember I told you earlier, our country names always spelled consistently. In this case, no. In one country, in one file, Bosnia and Herzegovina has been spelled without underscores and with spaces, and here with underscores. Of course, we are dealing with the same country. So, what we really want to know is, <coughs> let's say we we'll just have to agree on the spelling and see other countries with spaces seem to have underscores. Ah, here there's another case, Cap Verde. Okay, so we have Bosnia Herzegovina, Cap Verde. Is there any other case where we have a similar problem? Let's quickly scan through this. Oh, that all looks okay. That looks okay. Okay, so um, we seem to have. Oh, here. Micronesia, once federate states of and once without that uh, addition. So, and, oh, and El Salvador. Okay, we seem to have four such cases. So I think we want to eliminate, uh, let's highlight that, that one, that one, that one and what was the last one micronesia here and so we have to let's eliminate list this one we just have to be consistent so we have to figure out in which file were these names being used bosnia, bosnia herzegovina without underscores and eliminate and replace with underscores so let's go to land area bosnia let's go, control f to find, and I'll type Bosnia. Bosnia and Herzegovina, no, in land area, that was fine. Okay, let's see what about El Salvador. El Salvador. Okay, El Salvador was also spelled with underscores. So that land area file doesn't seem to be the uh, offender. Let's check uh, next the health. Okay, oh, here we go. You can already see the offender, Bosnia and Herzegovina without underscores. So let's replace that with underscores. So and this is now a little bit of handwork you have to do. Okay. Um, we had El Salvador. Here we go. Yeah. Also, uh, we had um, also Cape Verde. Let's see. Okay, but yeah, also without underscore. And what about Micronesia? Did it not have Micronesia? Ah, okay, so that addition I was missing here as well. What was that addition? Let's find again. What do we want? Okay, we want this. So let's just copy that. Go to the land area file. And let's use this. Okay. So now, now let's check the GDP file. 
let's see Micronesia okay that had the full version that's great did it also have uh, Salvador correctly yes El Salvador is also correct so and the other two as well okay so <clears throat> that means we want to get rid of this these are all not unique countries okay let's actually get rid of this uh, let's actually highlight whole thing no fill let's order again so we can uh, remove the gaps there we go okay that gaps are gone so that means now we have 184 rows the first row is a header row so we have 183 unique countries that means none of the files actually had all countries so um <clears throat> so let's see what are we going to do next next we're going to uh, see remember the beginning here is still our land area uh, file let's actually remove all of this and I'll demonstrate to you a super important uh, function in Excel let's save that here so what we now want in our file where we combine everything we also want these two and three digit uh, country codes now you could of course try and find so we could find Afghanistan and find what are these codes and type them in but that is way too much work there's an amazing function in Excel that you will have to learn it will save you so much time and especially especially, especially for this sort of task now when we apply this function now you will realize that here i'm really not assuming that you haven't done any excel work before uh, that's sort of too difficult a task here if this is your first time you're messing excel okay um we will provide you with other resources if you're really struggling with excel yeah i'm assuming that you know how to use functions i'll explain it but uh, fairly fast but you can pause and rewind and look for other help um that's part of being a student so the function we're going to use is called the x lookup function okay so <clears throat> here's how it works it needs a number of entries as you can see here from that little sort of highlighting thing first one is lookup value which value want do we want to find something for we want to find something for afghanistan we're not going to type afghanistan we're going to use that cell reference comma so now look up array where so basically excel is asking me is, is asking me hey okay you want me to find afghanistan where should i find afghanistan and i'm saying well why don't you find it here in this um in this column okay afghanistan okay and i should immediately say we're fixing this um to to be a fixed array so we're putting the uh actually no i'll first leave it and then we'll see what goes wrong if we don't do that so that's where i want you to find afghanistan and then it says okay return array it means okay once i found afghanistan in that list wherever it is what do you want me to do which value do you want me to give and i say well why don't you give me the value that comes from this column here okay so if you find afghanistan so if, if i ask you to find seychelles i want you to give me sc but I want you to find Afghanistan here. Okay. Um, next, and actually, you we can finish here. Close and enter. And oh, as by miracle, Excel has found out that the two country code for Afghanistan is AF. So can we also find the three country code? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to just copy this one across. No, no, actually, what we're going to do is, let's see if we copy that cell across. Uh, 
what this is now asking, okay, find AF in column B and return the value in column C. That's not really what we wanted. We wanted to, uh, to find the value in E2. So let's change that. And then we wanted to find Afghanistan in column A. So we have to change that back to A. I'll show you later how you can don't worry about that changing bit. And but then we want to find in C. Okay, and we get the same result. So we find Afghanistan in column A and then return whatever is in column three for that row. So that looks good. Can we do that for all countries? Okay, so we can uh, go down here. Now you see that seems to work, but here you have Barbados. It didn't find any value, so it gives you an A, but Barbados is here. So what happened here? So let's highlight that. And what you can see is by copying this down, well, by the way, how did we copy? I had these two cells down, download uh, highlighted. And I just double click that little square on the right hand side. And that may, the, excuse me, the, the formula just go all the way down. We could have also I'll just delete this. And you see there are more and more NNAs here. Let's see why in a moment. I could have just, just dragged that down. Okay, but if you double click, it just fills the entire column. Okay, and you could also just highlight both of these. Double click. and. Okay, it doesn't do that because it has done the first column. We're going to do this. So why hasn't that worked? Because now you can see as we copied this cell down, the references have been copied down. And so now it's looking for Barbados in A16 to A97, but Barbados is in A10. So when you copy this down, these, this reference here, that reference here, and that reference, you don't really want to change. So the way how you're going to do it is you're going to put dollar signs in front of the column and the row. So this is when I say, if you haven't seen that before, this is perhaps not the best way to learn it. And we'll put it here as well. Dollar in front of the B and in front of the two. That means we're fixing the B and the two. We are fixing the B and we are fixing the B183. So nothing changes. Let me firstly delete all of this again. But if I now copy this down, you see now we found something for Barbados. Okay, perhaps not, this still not. Ah, oh, that still hasn't quite worked. Why has that not worked? Ah, okay. We fixed these references for column F, but we didn't fix them for column G. You see, there are no dollar signs, so have to do that as well here dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign fixing all of that and then we can copy this down and now we also find Barbados and you see there basically no NAs but Monaco okay so it the land area file didn't have Monaco clearly is anything else we're missing? South Korea, it doesn't have a three digit code. Okay, that's the only missing information. And we have all our 183 countries. So let's just fix that information, Monaco. So we need to find the country code for Monaco. So where do you find them? Let's go back to browser and let's look um, country codes. Uh, Monaco. Okay, so country codes. So, okay, it has found us the telephone code that wasn't exactly what we wanted. But here we get the information. Okay. Two digit code MC, three digit code MCO. So MC, and this is MCO. 
And then what about South Korea? That was missing as well. So South Korea. Monaco search. Let's look for South Korea. Oh, that wasn't really what I wanted. Okay, let's just go back where I searched. So let's see. Country codes. South Korea. And uh, here we go, the ISO organization. So these codes are really standardized. These codes are uh, standardized. KR and KOR. Uh, okay, so now we have our list of all countries and all the geo codes. Realize there's still some formulas here. This relates to still these columns. So what would happen if I delete these columns now? Delete all these country codes disappear because they're linked with that formula. So I need to undo this. It's an undo button here or with the keyboard control Z. Okay, so before I delete these columns, I want to just keep the values here, not the formula. So we'll do what we did before. We highlight these two columns. Uh, we copy and then we paste values. So now you can see if you go in these fields, it's just the values. It means if I now delete these columns, the codes are still there. Excellent. Okay. So we haven't done anything yet. Uh, uh, we, all we've done is we've built the, 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 the skeleton of the file which we want to create. But it's super important. You need to understand what is it I want. And that's here a file where I have all the countries in my data sets in the rows. And then we will want to add the, the variables as columns. Okay. And sometimes you just have to do this manual work. Almost always you have to do this manual work. Um, lots of work we do when we work with data is this sort of data manu manipulation. Oh, it's called data wrangling sometimes and cleaning. Right? So it's super important. It's a very important skill. You will impress your first boss with your skills. Okay. Um, so let's go back to our spreadsheet. What we now want is we want our three variables here. GDP per capita, health expenditure, health expenditure and land area. All right, so we want to add these variables. So <clears throat> to do that, we will use that XLOOKUP function again. And from now on, the work will be fairly straightforward. Okay, remember here, ideally, or we, we think we have now fixed the inconsistencies. Okay, we worked on these inconsistencies here. We, the XLOOKUP function wouldn't really work. It wouldn't find Bosnia underscore and underscore Herzegovina if we are look if in the file where we are looking it says Bosnia space and space Herzegovina. Okay, but we think we fixed that now, so we can now use that country name column to um, to match our information. So we have our new temp file open, but also our three files with the individual variables. So let's get, get our GDP information first. So let's look up, find Afghanistan. Now where to find it? There is no information here. Now we can actually look in a different file. So we're going to the GDP file. So here's the GDP file. So, and up here, you can still see that formula on the top. You can still see the formula in the temp file. But here we want to look, and you could actually, you can highlight the A column. And you can see here, it actually gives you the file name, okay? And then column A, comma. Then the next entry was, what do you want to return? And we want to return column C, the GDP information. 
And you can see it now highlights the full column and has this dollar signs already. So we actually will not have to actually do this dollar thing anymore. It's already done. We close and press enter. And isn't that a miracle? In the temp file, we've basically given a command. We said, hey, find Afghanistan in the country indicators GDP file in column A, and then return to us whatever you find in column C. Again, in that same file. All right. Magic. And what it has found is that the GDP per capita for Afghanistan is 530 US dollars. And I would just look at that. How amazing is that? It has completed the full table. Now, we know we don't have observations for all countries, so let's just check. Palestine, is there indeed not information for Palestine? Now, I should actually mention something here. Let me see whether... Um, let me see, actually go to the GDP, let's go to the GDP file. And um, find Palestine. Oh, where's Palestine? So I do Control F to find Palestine. Okay, here we go. Here's our information. Okay, 581202. So why... Palestine, Palestine, Palestine. Five eight one two or two. Okay, so we have that information here. Now, why I want to mention that Palestine is, of course, if you know your politics, you know that whether Palestine is a country or not is an extremely hotly debated issue. Now, really, it's not a country. Although there's a Palestinian representation at the UN, but not recognized as a country. There are other occasions where that is not so 100% clear. Okay, so it's not in here, okay, in here, but often you will see a row for Taiwan. Now, many of you are Chinese students. You know that, and we all know that whether Taiwan is a recognized country or not is again disputed by some it's not recognized in the un as a country the uk doesn't recognize taiwan as a country okay but there there is a small number of countries which has recognized taiwan as a country it's of course hotly debated I don't want to go into politics but these these are uh, the facts china sees it as part of china and that is the official line for many countries um, for instance, the UK. Often when you have these files, what we, what we are really looking at here is countries and territories. And often these columns will be labeled like this, country and territories, to exactly sort of stay out of that political debate. Okay, because you will see, of course, often you will be able to see macroeconomic measures for Taiwan whether you see it to be a part of China and then it's a measure for part of that uh, that part of China or whether you see it as an independent country but still there is like a GDP for Taiwan okay so often you will see that this column is actually called country and territories not here Taiwan is not in here all right so let's go to our tab we are in our temp file so getting the GDP data across was extremely easy um well let's do the same with the help expenditure data x look up find afghanistan where well in the health expenditure file so let's go to the uh, health expenditure file in column a what do you want me to return well column b Health expenditure, close parenthesis, enter. Here we go, health expenditure for Afghanistan. We double click on that little square. And here we have the health expenditure for everything. Isn't that magic? And of course, now you can do the same 
a planned array. Now, of course, that magic only works because we did all of that prep work. So land area bum, bum, is here, land area. So find it in column A, comma. So I need comma here. Return what you have in column D. Close parenthesis, enter. Land area for Afghanistan, double click. We have all the land areas magic okay we have all of that information now you can see when you click on here there's everywhere you have that formula sometimes useful to keep that formula in case the information in your original spreadsheets changes and you want to automatically change in our case this is just fixed information we highlight all of this we copy or control c we go to paste and paste values now the formula have disappeared and we just have the values now we have recreated the spreadsheet which you have seen at the beginning but let's do two more let's do two more things okay let's express the gdp variable not in dollars but in thousands of dollars okay, so let's actually insert a new column here to, to make the difference clear. This is just to demonstrate something, not, not for a particular reason. So that's in dollars. And we want GDP per capita, but in 1000 of dollars. Now, in some sense, this is gonna be trivial given that you've already done the XLOOKUP function. We again need to use sort of a function or not really a function, just a calculation. That's why we have that here as an example. Really what you want to take is, if you, if you see that for Afghanistan, what we want is the value of 0 0.53. Uh, 0.53 thousands of dollars is the GDP per capita in Afghanistan. We know Afghanistan is not very rich, very poor, in fact. So we want that value and we want to divide it by a thousand. That's what it is, okay? Equal, so in your formula you have equal, we want to use that value and then divide by a thousand and you press enter. And if you want that entire column filled, double click that little square. Or you can also drag or just double click. There you go. Everything again, you have the formula here. We wanted to get rid of the formula, you highlight, copy, paste values. Okay, so now you could, for instance, delete column D if you wanted. So Austria, 51,000 US dollars, GDP per capita. Okay, so all good. Now the last thing here is I want to know which continent is each of these countries from? Because you may want that, because you may want to calculate like summary statistics, like what's the average GDP per capita in Africa or in Asia? And the information which you have so far in that spreadsheet does not allow to do any such, calcul uh, to do any such calculations. So we some somewhere have to get that information from. And this little task is because I want you to, to see how you just look for data. Okay, is well, so what you want to ideally, we've already used this sort of XLOOKUP function. So ideally, what you have, what, what we want to find is something like a spreadsheet which has country or perhaps even better, GOID, a two, you know, two digit code, and has the continent here. Okay, so for instance, for it would have information like this, perhaps I need the two digit one or the three digit as well. And Afghanistan is in Asia. Okay, let's uh, uh, for Austria. Okay, it would have an entry like this. So this is the sort of information because if you had a spreadsheet like this for all the countries, then we know we're going to use XLOOKUP to copy that information into here. Oh, you couldn't see that, sorry. Okay, let me move myself. So this is the type of spreadsheet which we are looking for, okay? We want country and or 
ID code. Okay, in some sense, ID code sort of nicer. Then we don't have to worry about um, spellings of names. And we want another variable where which continent they're in. For instance, Af Afghanistan, Asia, Austria, and Europe. And then we want this for all the countries. And then we can use XLOOKUP to copy that information over into our table, just as we did before. So let's find such a file. So let's go to search, okay, go to Google or any other search engine. Uh, Google is my search engine I'm most familiar with. So what do we search for? Okay, so a list, ideally perhaps in an Excel file, or uh, well, we can always wish for, th for that, of countries, and continents. Let's see whether we get anything useful here. All right, so you see actually here, list of countries, statistics, times, list of countries by continent. Oh, that looks pretty good. So let's see what we see here. Okay, spreadsheet, nice map with the different continents. Um, Yes, that's sort of a spreadsheet we want. Doesn't have country codes, that's this weird structure. Ah, actually here, countries or areas. Okay, here are all the countries, yes. Alpha three codes, so three digit codes, and here's the continent. This is exactly what we want. This is exactly what we want for lots of countries, more than 240, hopefully all our 181 are in there. So this is a table on a uh, website. Let's see top which website that is. How do we get in that into Excel? There are different ways. Here's the cheap way. We just highlight. Okay, we should be able to scroll all the way down here. There are more sophisticated ways of doing that. Go to here. Copy Control C on my keyboard or Command C on Excel. Control C. We go to our temp file and um, actually I'll put it on a new sheet. So I go here, have A1, and I'll just say Control V. Ha! And do you see what happens? That table has just come across nicely with a bit of shading, but we don't care. Okay, so this is now our table. Three digit codes are in C, continents are in G. Let's see whether X lookup works. Equals X lookup. Three digit country code. Uh, use country codes when you can. And where to find that? In column C, comma, and what to return? Well, return column G, close parenthesis, enter. How good is this? Afghanistan is indeed in Asia. Let's scroll a little bit down. Algeria is in Africa, Albania in Europe, Angola in Africa. Isn't that beautiful? If I had given you that task, Without that introduction, you possibly would have thought, oh, how much work is that? Ah, here you go. All continents for all our 183 countries. Amazing. So again, there's the formula here. Highlight column H, copy, paste values. Now we have the values. Now we'll delete this. Now you can do amazing things like let's highlight all of that. Go to filter. This is quite nice. And you see all of these little drop down, down boxes appear here. And say, okay, go to continent. Show me only the countries in Africa. There you go. These are all your African countries. Okay. Or you could even, so let's select all again. We could perhaps first sort all the data according to GDP per capita. Here we go, GDP per capita, from largest to smallest. 
there we go and now you can filter all countries from Africa and now we can see which is the richest country in Africa turns out it's the Seychelles okay South Africa here six a bit more than six thousand US dollars GDP per capita okay so let's look at everything again now this is long enough we're almost at an hour but we've achieved quite a lot in this one one hour we've done a lot of data cleaning we've done data wrangling we prepared a spreadsheet we thought about how should our spreadsheet we want in the end look like we prepared it we built the skeleton here the country names and the variable names and then we used the amazing x lookup function uh, to copy all the information across and actually that worked that was super quick in the end so thank you very much for hanging in there and practicing all this